I swore off dating and decided to... No way! Oh, the Gaylers are gonna freak out! What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. I just hit export on the YouTube version of my 1989 Taylor's version full album reaction. It is 7 p.m. on Friday, October 27th. I've literally been sitting in this chair for 24 hours, like more than that actually, but I did it. I did it. It's exporting right now, but I really, really wanted to make another little video, just kind of a little album review, going over some of the Haler tea, as well as reading the prologue with you guys. I haven't read it yet. Um, I know that the prologue comes out with the CD. I was waiting for the Target version. Oh, I just realized I haven't even ordered the CD yet. Ah! It's because I have PTSD of wanting the deluxe version and then not knowing, but the deluxe version is apparently the one with Sweeter Than Fiction. That just happened, but... Um, if this is your first time on my channel, hi, I'm Lauren. How are ya? You should click this video is my vault tracks, this video is my album reaction, and then if you want the full uncut versions, I post those on my Patreon beforehand, and yeah. I just, I wanna to talk to you about 1989 now that I've had like a full 24 hours. I've been able to listen to the track, um, see what everyone's been saying online. Um, first, let's start with my little note. Um, I always like to take notes whenever I do a Taylor Swift reaction because it's like, things just kind of blend together. This is a very low key, casual video. Like I kinda of wanna get my cozy blanket. Hi Chester, you were a really fun part of the video. Like Guys, this is the coziest blanket on Amazon. I was influenced by an influenza. Um, and I love this blanket so very much. Ooh, okay. Hi. Uh, notes. All right, so in terms of things that are different, and this is just my opinion, not all. Um, and also another side note, I haven't yet listened to the album in a car, and I haven't yet listened to the whole album with AirPods or Apple Music. Thank you to everyone on Twitter who's been answering me. I, as you can see by my reaction in the, the full album reaction, there was a lot of first, firsts, first listens for me that sounded really weird and off and muted. And it's, it's because I had this setting on my Spotify turned on called like enhancement, neutralize, I don't know. I'll put a screenshot of what someone tweeted me today. Thank you for telling me that. I had no idea that my Spotify had these little settings on it. Um, but besides that, first of all, um, and I want you guys to leave comments, like either as I say these questions to you or feel free to add one comment or for the algorithm's sake, feel free to add a bunch of little comments answering my questions. One, this is a two-parter. How did you listen to the album the first time? And then two, what did you think of the sound quality, the sound mixing? What did you honestly think? This is a different version. This is different, I mean, same in instruments, but a different time period, different um, technology. It's a different song. So there are little things that are gonna sound different. Taylor Swift is 10 years older. I, I, girl math, I don't know. I think 10 years, I'm not, I'm, you didn't come here for math class. Um, she's older, so she's gonna sound a little older, a little different. Um, she's also gonna sound a little less, what did everyone call it? Like in Dear John, like maybe less emotional and less raw because these are like really old relationships. I don't know. I really want your thoughts on your honest first opinion and hey, be nice to each other guys. This is a safe space here. Chester, what are you doing little bug? Hi bug. Oh, uh, do you wanna join? I really gotta do this video, okay? I really gotta do this video. I love you, Chester, but this is like the only time period of the day that I have been able to do this. Okay, so in terms of things that were different that I wrote down, I didn't write down too many things, but um, in Welcome to New York, I love the one little note change at the beginning, and I want you to tell me if you consider this a change or not, because just because I consider it a change or it's something that I noticed doesn't mean that it's correct. Like, I could have very easily gotten this wrong <laughs> who knows you know um one little note change in welcome to new york the next little thing i put i wrote down was i wrote down a bunch of dif differences that i heard in wildest dreams i wrote down <laughs> baby with four a's <laughs> um second thing i wrote down was just pretend just pretend it's so funny to like 
not have the song playing right now and to be, hopefully you know the parts I'm talking about that are a little different. Um, extra shouts in the background. And then I also wrote down, in your wildest dream. There's lots of O's and U's in your. Um, in terms of ones before that, I already told you that blank space sounded a little off for me. The Nalaretch name was like one of the best parts of the song. It really, really was like, oh God. When it came out that year, my dog is chasing his tail right now. <laughs> oh my God. I didn't think that dogs really did that. Chester, hi. Hey. I'm so glad I got that on camera. Um, blank space sounded off for me. Did it sound off for anybody else? I wanna know your thoughts. Um, there were a couple moments in Shake It Off that I was like, this doesn't sound the greatest. Again, I really need to give this album a listen in the car. I'm sure it'll sound different. Um, Cause I have, yeah, I haven't even gotten a chance to listen to these songs without Spotify settings being changed. Cause I just, it's been a wild 24 hours, okay? Um, what else, what else? I wrote down for how you get the girl. The difference is, is worse or for better. <laughs> Lots of T's and E's and R's in that one. Um, backtracks of forever and ever sound different. And then there's a little extra beepity beeps. Not having the song in front of me. I don't know what that means, but do you know what I mean by writing down a little extra beepity beeps? Oh God, was this a good idea to make this video? <laughs> um, I wrote down that Clean, the lyric video is absolutely amazing. My friend Brad did the graphics for 1989 World Tour and she reused the graphics for the lyric video. Super freaking cool. Um, the Wonderland lyric video was cool. And then that's it. That's it. Things I want to go over with you right meow. Taylor Swift released voice memos um, on Tumblr. Remember Tumblr? Let's move you up. I didn't even know that people still used, I mean, I didn't even know that Tumblr had like a music thing. So there's that. Um, but I re-downloaded it today. I also still have a ton of notifications on there. A lot of you guys have like reached out and tried to message me on Tumblr. And guys, I don't know how this works. I literally have in my bio of Tumblr, how the F does Tumblr work? Wow, okay. I don't really know, is there a way to, do I have followers on Tumblr? Anyways. So she released voice notes going over, now that we don't talk sluts and is it over now? So I thought it'd be fun to listen to this with you guys. And then I will be getting into some Haler Harry Styles and Taylor Swift lore back from the day. Guys, they dated for like two and a half months. Chester. They dated for two and a half months and it was such an impactful relationship that we got like an album and a half out of it. It's crazy, it's crazy. Um, let's start with the behind the music on Tumblr. Look at this great pic of her, amazing. This one is for Now That We Don't Talk. Now That We Don't Talk is one of my favorite songs that was left behind. It was so hard to leave it behind, but I think we wrote it a little bit towards the end of the process and we couldn't get the production right at the time. But we had tons of time to perfect the production this time and figure out what we wanted the song to sound like. Um, and I just think it's, uh, it's, it's, I think it's the shortest song I've ever had. It but is. I think it packs a punch. I think it really goes in for the short amount of time we have. I think it makes its point. It does, Taylor. It's so good. Like going back and like editing my reaction stuff. Now that we don't talk is a bop and a half. I need more of it. I want you to copy paste the, the, the audio just to make it four minutes long. Like it's really good. It's a very good song. Okay, next behind the music is for Slut. The song Slut is a song we wrote for 1989. And in it, I kind of sort of cheekily play on the discussions at that time in my life around my dating life. And that's not the only time on 1989 that I've done that. I did that on Blank Space. And I think when I came down to having to pick songs for the album, I think I thought, okay, well, I'm gonna choose Blank Space. And unfortunately I had to make some tough decisions in terms of what to put on the track list. That's but I love this song because I think it's really dreamy and really, I don't 
No, like I always saw 1989 as a New York album, but this song to me was always California. And maybe that was another reason it didn't make the cut because sometimes thematically I just have these weird little rules in my head, but I'm so happy it's finally going to be something that you guys hear because I have always been proud of it. I've always wanted it to come out into the world and now it is. So yay. Yay, Taylor. Yay. That's so funny that she views it as a California song. Um, a lot of people online have so many things to say about the song Slut. I, I just feel like, I mean, it's because I've been working this last 24 hours. I feel like I need more time with it. Like, I need to, I remember liking it. I remember that Slut is like, Slut. It's like, it's like very high pitched and chorusy and funny like that. All right, last voice memo from Tumblr for Is It Over Now? Is It Over Now was a song I wanted to end the album because I think it's a kind of funny play on words of like, is the album over now? <laughs> and I always saw this song as sort of a sister to Out of the Woods and I Wish You Would. I kind of saw those songs as similar. So unfortunately, when we were making these decisions on what to put on 1989, what to leave behind, I had to make some tough choices. And um now that doesn't matter anymore because you guys are going to hear all the songs. So I am so happy about this one being out. I really love the let's fast forward to 300 takeout coffees later. Yeah, um, that's cute. That section just, I feel like, head banging too every time it comes on. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you agree. She's such a cutie. I was going to say after New Romantics, it's very weird to not hear them. Um, so over the years, people have asked me about my song, right? Like I, it's just like ingrained in my head. Um, I love that. And then in terms of another thing that I saw online, my favorite Instagram account, must like me for me, make sure you're following her. She is iconic. Um, Diane Warren recalls writing, say don't go with Taylor Swift 10 years ago. Um, Diane Warren, here's the article, says, um, Diane Warren sharing her thoughts on say, Say Don't Go, which she only heard Thursday evening as a fully produced track on 1989 Taylor's version, after writing it with Taylor at the end of 2013 and recording the demo on New Year's Day 2014. Um, I said, oh my god, this is fucking awesome, said Warren. It was such a surprise to me that the record version was as good as it was. You know what? I hope they release this as a single because I think it's a fucking hit. It's good. It's really, really good. Um, this article, I'm gonna read the little article. Where's your, this is a little cozy video. A little long winded, hopefully easy to edit. Oh God, everything's falling. Easy to edit, cozy video. The article says, at the time she wondered, Diane Warren, at the time Diane wondered why Say Don't Go wasn't featured on the original 1989 track list. Quote, everything has its time, you know? It took a while to see the light of day, but I'm glad it finally did. It was worth the wait. Diane Warren recalled Taylor being very particular about how she said certain things while working on the lyrics, thinking about her listeners every step of the way. She's deeply aware of how her fans want to hear something. I can't explain it, but that's probably, that's probably why she's the biggest effing star in the world. Say Don't Go was written at the end of 2013, I already said that, and they recorded the demo on New Year's Day. On New Year's Day in 2014, mo many people wouldn't want to work on a holiday, but the Lavender Hayes performer was committed to the song. Diane says, I'm a workaholic and that's fine for me, but I, remember, but I remember being impressed that she did too. Everybody's on vacation, but she showed up. As with most songwriting sessions, Warren walked away unsure if the song would see the light of day. That's interesting. You go to like a songwriting session with a huge star and it's not even guaranteed. That's wild. As with most songwriting sessions, Warren walked away unsure if the song would see the light of day. I was curious what they would do with the record, she said, later noting that she was informed of its release on Thursday evening and went outside to give the track a listen. I said, oh my God, this is effing awesome. That's cool. That is really cool. Go Diane. Um, okay, prologue. Let's read the prologue. I have just been so busy. Um, is this really not even done exporting yet? It's at 88%. Oh my God, Final Cut Pro. My computer is like moving at glacial pace. <laughs> um, 1989, Taylor's version prologue. Here's what it says. So yes, there are four different versions, like physically, but the words all say the same thing. I thought that they all had different things and I was like, oh my God, I don't have time to do all this reading, Taylor. I'm just gonna read you the one prologue. I'll try and put it on the screen here if you wanna pause too. I have not read this yet. This is kind of like a reading reaction thing. 
When I was 24, I sat in a backstage dressing room in London, buzzing with anticipation. My backup singers and bandmates gathered around me in a scattered circle. Scissors emerged and I watched in the mirror as my locks of long curly hair fell in piles on the floor. Oh God. This chick needs to write a book. I cannot, this, ugh, what? Scissors emerged, like how do you write like this? There I was in my plaid button down shirt, grinning sheepishly as my tor, as my, I was about to say tournaments, as my tour mates and friends cheered on my haircut. This simple thing that everyone does, but I had a secret. For me, it was more than a change of a hairstyle. At 24, I decided to completely reinvent myself. How does a person reinvent herself, you ask? In any way I could think of. Musically, uh, how does a person reinvent herself, you ask? In any way I could think of. Musically, geographically, aesthetically, behaviorally, motivationally, and I did so joyfully. The curiosity I had felt, the first murmurs of while making red, had amplified into a pulsing heartbeat of restlessness in my ears. The risks I took when I toyed with pop sounds and sensibilities on red, I wanted to push it further. The sense of freedom I felt when traveling to big bustling cities, I wanted to live in one. The voices that had begun to sh the voices that had begun to shame me in new ways for dating like a normal young woman, I wanted to silence them. You see, in the years preceding this, I had become the target of slut shaming, the intensity and relentlessness of which would be criticized and called out if it happened today. So true. The jokes about my amount of boyfriends, the trivialization of my songwriting as if it were a predatory act of a boy crazy psychopath. That is such a good point. The media co-signing of this narrative, I had to make it stop because it was really starting to hurt. It became clear to me that there was no such thing as casual dating or even having a male friend who you platonically hang out with. If I was seen with him, it was assumed I was sleeping with him. So I swore off hanging out with guys, dating, flirting, or anything that could be weaponized against me by a culture that claimed to believe in liberating women, but consistently treated me with the harsh moral codes of the Victorian era. Being a consummate optimist, I assumed I could fix this if I simply changed my behavior. I swore off dating and decided to... No way! Oh, the Gaylers are gonna freak out! Wow, this is the first time she's ever outright... Wow, okay, next part says... I swore off dating and decided to focus only on myself, my music, my growth, and my female friendships. If I only hung out with my female friends, People couldn't sensationalize or sexualize that, right? I would learn later on that people could and people would. That's confirmation. That, I am taking that as confirmation that she is not into females. She is heterosexual. Oh my God, I'm going to, uh, I hope I don't upset anybody out there. I would love, <laughs> I guess I would love to know your take, but I don't... If only I hung out with my female friends, people couldn't sensationalize or sexualize that, right? I learned that people would. I, it's become this weird cultural thing and like Swifties are like bullying each other over it. And again, I totally believe that any song, any piece of art, whether it's music or art on the wall can be, can absolutely be a creative outlet to apply to your life, to anyone's life, to have, to have meaning in many different ways to many different people without also trying to do, all right. I feel like I'm digging myself into a hole. Let me know if you know what I'm talking about and I would really do, I would love to know your opinion, whether or not whatever side you're on on that end. Okay, next paragraph. I would, I would learn later on that people could and people would. But none of that mattered then because I had a plan and I had a demeanor as trusting as a basket of golden retriever puppies. <laughs> I had the keys to my own apartment in New York and I had new melodies bursting from my imagination. I had Max Martin and Shellback who were happy to help me explore this new sonic landscape I was enamored with. I had a new friend named Jack Antonoff who had made some cool tracks in his apartment. I had the idea that the album would be called 1989 and we would reference big 80s synth and write sky high choruses. I had sublime inexplicable faith and I ran right toward it. 
in high heels and a crop top. Yes, you did, girl. There was so much that I didn't know then, and looking back, I see what a good thing that was. This time of my life was marked by, this time of my life was marked by the right kind of naivety, naivety, naivete, I don't know, a hunger for adventure and a sense of freedom I hadn't tasted before. It turns out that the cocktail of naivety, hunger for adventure, and freedom can lead to some nasty hangovers, metaphorically speaking. Of course, everyone had something to say, but they, but they always will. I learned lessons, paid prices, and tried to, don't say it, don't say it, I'm sorry, I have to say it, shake it off. <clears throat> I'll always be so incredibly grateful for how you loved and embraced this album. You, who followed my zigzag creative choices and cheered on my risks and experiments. Oh. You, who heard the wink and humor in blank space and maybe even empathized and maybe even empathize with the pain behind the satire. You who saw the seeds of allyship and advocating for equality to wait. You who saw the seeds of allyship and advocating for equality in Welcome to New York. You who knew that maybe a girl who surrounds herself with female friends in adulthood is making up for a lack of them in childhood. Not starting a ty tyrannical, I can't even say it not starting a tyrannical hot girl cult. <laughs> Remember the squad? You who saw that I reinvent myself for a million reasons and that one of them is to try my very best to entertain you. You who have had the grace to allow me the freedom to change. I'm getting emotional, this is great. I was born in 1989, reinvented for the first time in 2014, and a part of me was reclaimed in 2023 with the re-release of this album I love so dearly. Never in my wildest dreams did I imagine the magic you would sprinkle on my life for so long. Wow, I just got chills. This moment is a reflection of the woods we've wandered through and all this love between us still glowing in the darkest dark. I present to you with gratitude and wild wonder my version of 1989. It's been waiting for you. <laughs> the note concludes with a handwritten Taylor. Guys. Emojin Heap posted on Instagram. Eee, this is exciting. I need a little bit more light. I don't, I'm not, I don't want to put any lights up right now. How do I turn off? Guys, Emojin Heap posted on Instagram this cutie picture of them. And she said, today marks the release of Taylor's version of 1989, the album originally released in 2014. The latest in line towards Taylor Swift's endeavor to re-record every album she's ever done as part of an old record deal. This is Taylor playing a badass card to stay in control of her work in a commercial music industry that largely works against musicians. Here's me in my studio re-recording my bits on Clean last year, almost a decade on from the day Taylor swooped in to visit me at my home for 10 hours between two sold out show at the O2 Arena. Wow, that is really cool. Downstairs in the hideaway studio, two ladies in a room, we wrote and produced 90% of the track and still managed to eat lunch and dinner. It's actually quite a feat. Now you can have fun playing Spot the Difference. Little did I know my daughter Scout, oh my God, her daughter's name is Scout, that's cute. Little did I know my daughter Scout was also with us all there on her first journeys in my womb. Oh, from a prior collaboration a day or two before in Iceland, the country, not the food shop. I'm confused on that. I worked on through the night, adding some backing vocals and tweaking away on the mix, then sent to Taylor for when she woke up and ta-da, it found a home on her album. Thank you, Taylor, for inviting me into your world. Oh, that's really cool. Look at these pictures. Oh, I love that. That is so freaking cool. I love her. Um, the original handwritten lyrics to Wonderland, New Romantics, Welcome to New York, and Wildest Dreams are included on posters in the Target CD version of 1989 TV. Oh wow, that's really cool. I'll put these um, on the screen here. These are handwritten original lyrics and some of them are different. Wow, we love that. I love all this stuff, you guys. Um, another little piece that I found super interesting here, thank you Sarah for putting together this incredible document that helped me come into words this video, this cozy little vid. Cages, boxes, hunters, foxes on Tumblr. Thank you for all that you do, by the way. Iconic, you are iconic. Anonymous asks, sorry if this is a really well-known answer, but why has Max Martin not been involved in the re-recordings? 
juicy, juicy tea? The answer says, okay, so it's sort of a two-part answer. Factually, we know that Taylor and Max have professional, not personal, beef over writing credits and production credits. He will not produce for artists that don't offer writing credits. She wants to be able to solo write at will. He also does not share production credits, and I think it's very important to her to be labeled as a producer on the re-recordings. Interesting, he doesn't, okay. So if he's not share, if he doesn't work in a way that he doesn't share production credits because of how much, all right. I mean, whatever. There's a rumor that the price he was asking her to pay him to come back was so absurdly high that she said, nah, and did it on her own. And that was the right choice given how good these are. Max, what are you doing? What amount of money would be worth not being a part of this re-record? I'm sorry. I understand professional beef and maybe that means that like, his team and like there's con contractual things that don't allow him to, but like, it's Taylor Swift. You were a part of the original creation of 1989. Lower your price, I don't know, I don't know. That's whatever, that's just kind of what I think about that. I would love to know your thoughts on all of these things. That's just very, very interesting. Um, Haler, Haler T. Yesterday night when I was procrastinating filming, I went on this whole thing taking screenshots of Harry Styles relevant things because they only had a romance for for two months granted I think it was like the very romantic months it's like December New Year's Eve and all of these things Christmas um please take a look at this lovely screenshot that I saw and retweeted on Twitter on November 7th nine years ago Taylor Swift left her hotel room in London wearing the paper airplane necklace for the first time November 7th 2012 look at this little outfit and her hair she's so prim and proper that's wild um, what else did I want to show you? Um, I'm gonna include this link in the description down below. Thank you, Yahoo Entertainment. Harry Styles was a perfect muse for 1989. Take a look back at their whirlwind romance. They had a two month romance at the end of 2012. Taylor Swift and Harry Styles both performed at the MTV VMAs and we kind of think that might be the first time that they met, started their connection, whatever. Then November, 2012, this is when the dating rumors began to start. She had recently split from Connor Kennedy, also an iconic relationship with the iconic red bathing suit, and Taylor and Harry Styles were showing some massive PDA during rehearsals for The X Factor. Taylor Swift was there to rehearse the State of Grace off of Red, and Harry Styles attended the rehearsal with her. We have a quote from someone who was there at that rehearsal that says, Harry was smiling at her while she rehearsed. When she was done, he jumped up on stage, picked her up, put her over his shoulder and carried her off stage. The crew was really surprised. The host, Mario Lopez, gave more of the scoop on the sighting because he saw Harry Styles. He's like, what are you doing here? And then Harry Styles sort of pointed towards Taylor and then he saw them later like holding hands. So. Quick little whirlwind romance that started. So then Taylor and Harry were captured by the paparazzi. This is an iconic date. Like these are the pictures that you see of them together all the time at New York City's Central Park Zoo. Harry Styles re reveals later on that this was only their second date and it was just, there were so many paparazzi just like following them, like walking around. I like remember that. Um, although they spent the holidays apart that year, they were together most of December as they were spotted on States in England and in Park City, Utah. And then they spent New Year's Eve together as seen in some of these random onlooker photos that claim that they shared a New Year's kiss. Then January, 2013, and this is apparently the month that their relationship came to an end. Taylor and Harry were spotted on a vacation in the British Virgin Islands, but then their trip is cut short after a reported blowout fight. Again, this is like reported on by like the Sun and the Daily Mail and while they sometimes get it right, they're just, you can't really trust everything. But for the sake of this video, let's just say that it's true. The Daily Mail captures pictures of Taylor Swift leaving the, va leaving the vacation alone on a boat in a blue dress, AKA the lyrics to Is It Over Now? Um, a source claims they were on holiday. Oh, this, this is definitely like a British source. Can I try an accent? Oh, this is gonna be, be terrible, isn't it? They were on holiday and had an almighty row. 
They are two young stars at the top of their game. So who knows what will happen in the future? That was a terrible accent. Make fun of me, I, I deserve it. And then People Magazine confirmed the news after that, and that's it. That's their two month whirlwind relationship. Yeah, that's what happened. That was them, and ugh. It's crazy that we have that picture. Taylor Swift, have, she had to have known that we were all gonna go, like, or, or someone was gonna remember the picture, and just, it's just very, very interesting that we have this literal picture. Um, I really want Harry Styles to say something. He should capitalize on this moment. He really should. He really should, don't you think? I think so. I don't know. It's just, ugh, it's wild, it really is. Um, I think that's all that I have to say about this album. But for now, my YouTube video is uploading. That is four videos, four, that I completed in the last 24 hours. My legs hurt, <laughs> and I don't know why. I didn't use my legs to edit this video. I did this insane workout the other day, but I have some Spain vlogs that are gonna be coming your way, and I'm going to be bringing you some content around my dog, Chester, and what it's been like for Matt and I to be first-time puppy parents. So I hope that you are ready for that. And yeah, I had a lot of fun doing this. You know, you know I always have it. Like, when I'm in the thick of editing and, and reacting and it's like 4 a.m. and I'm like, there's like makeup caked to my face. Oh my God, also, can I just say that editing the video of my vault tracks, my makeup looks so crusty. It's like caked into my forehead wrinkles, making me look like I'm this old woman. I don't know, maybe I'm just being really, I, hard on myself, but like the, I just really noticed my makeup on the very first video on my full album. It's just like, oh, it looks all prim and proper and makeup is set. And then the vault track, I'm like, re, 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 I don't know. <laughs> it's just me being weird. Um, okay, I'm going to end this video here. I hope that you guys enjoyed my little cozy, cozy little chat with you guys, um, I enjoyed talking to you, and, and yeah, I will include all of the links about everything that I talked about down below, including the link to my amazing checkered blanket. Y'all, check out my Amazon storefront. Just, I got good taste, let me just tell you. Okay guys, let me know in the comments what you think of everything, and also, what other content around 1989, Taylor's version, are you looking for from me? I still have not reacted or heard Bad Blood, Kendrick Lamar version. It's it's just been a day. I haven't been able to do it. I would like to, but that's just that's just that. Let me know what other content you would like to hear from me. Um, I was kind of starting a list of like the best lyrics that like really mess me up from this album. I think that'd be kind of like a fun one to do, but let me know your thoughts. Would love to hear from you. Make sure you're following me on Instagram and TikTok. And I will see you, and like this video. Please like this video. I'm trying really hard. I'm gonna try and get back to my YouTube in. Okay, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.